So if you're a faithful user of the internet, you probably know what a meme is. M-E-M-E. -M -E. But if you don't, it's a graphic or an image or a text that's often humorous that gets spread around the internet, internet like wildfire. And I don't know who creates these memes. I want to meet these people that create these memes one day. But there's been a lot of memes for 2020. I thought it'd be appropriate to begin the sermon uh, with a few memes. Uh, so this first one, 1980, someone saying, I bet there'll be flying cars in the future. And 2020 comes, there are no flying cars. And this year, no one could have predicted, it's been a battle. We're like pirates for toilet paper. <laughs> no one would have imagined toilet paper would be one of the themes of our year. I love this one. My team getting ready for another Zoom negotiation. <laughs> and I thought about our elders and putting each of our pictures up on there, like getting ready for an elders meeting. Pants are optional, right, on Zoom. But a year ago, I had no idea what Zoom was. And now we're living in a Zoom world. And I've seen a handful of this last one recently. I'm going to stay up late on New Year's Eve, not to see the New Year in, but to make sure this one leaves. And I think that's the sentiment. I don't know who is that guy. He's a Muppet. Okay, I wasn't sure. So I think that's the sentiment for a lot of us right now. We are so ready to be done with 2020. We can't wait for this year to be over with. But I want to caution us. I want us to, to pause today. And look back on 2020, what is God trying to teach us through this crazy year? To be not so quick to move ahead to 2021. So that's my hope through this message, for us to look back on 2020. What has God been doing? And then we will get to what, what lies ahead for 2021. I want to look at a few verses in the book of Hosea that have always meant a lot to me. Uh, the book of Hosea is in the Old Testament. It's one of the minor prophets the theme of Hosea is all about the covenantal love of our God. That God has remained true and faithful to his covenant, to his love for his people, even though his people have not. And for the prophet Hosea, this is personal for him. This connects to his own story. Because Hosea's wife cheated on him. She committed adultery. Yet Hosea remained true to his unfaithful wife. And God uses the picture of Hosea and his marriage to speak about his people. God's people have wandered. They've chosen other things to worship. They have wavered from their allegiance to their God. And yet, and yet God is inviting them to return, to come back home. We see this right away at the beginning of the passage, Hosea chapter 6. So turn with me right now. It's on page 803 in my Bible. That might help you out a little bit. It's right after Daniel. Hosea chapter 6, uh, verses 1 and 2. It says, Come, let us return to the Lord. He has torn us to pieces, but he will heal us. He has injured us, but he will bind up our wounds. In two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will restore us that we may live in his presence. Do you see the invitation right away that God is offering his people? Come, let us return to the Lord. Put away your wandering ways and come back to me. So Ivana and I have been watching the Netflix series, The Crown which is the story about the royal family in England. In the past season, they introduced Princess Diana and her relationship to Prince Charles. And if you're familiar with Princess Di and Prince Charles, you know they had a very difficult relationship. And to be honest, it's painful and heartbreaking to watch the portrayal of their broken marriage, how cold and frigid it became. And eventually they began just living just separate lives. And this is the reality of our broken and fallen world. We see estranged relationships all the time. Relationships that come to the point there doesn't seem to be much hope 
and a future for this relationship. And it made me think, we take for granted that God gives us the opportunity to return. We take for granted that God welcomes us back, quite unlike the stories that we are familiar with. When an angry person says to another, we're done. This is over. I don't want to see you ever again. The bridge is burned. And maybe for you that that strikes a very personal chord because you've experienced that kind of pain in a relationship in this life. And I want to remind us this morning that our God is so not like this. God does not relate to us this way. God never says to us, as long as we have breath, I'm done with you. Forget about you. This relationship is over. God is so patient, so generous with compassion. Over and over again, he offers the invitation for us to return. Be reconciled to him. Come, let us return to the Lord. And then we get to the second part of verse 1, which is a little confusing. He has torn us to pieces, but he will heal us. He has injured us, but he will bind up our wounds. So the invitation is to return, but God's people are not in a good place. They are in a precarious situation. They are torn up to pieces. They have been injured. So a few verses later, we get a little explanation about what this tearing to pieces is about. Hosea 6, verse 5. Therefore, I cut you in pieces with my prophets. I killed you with the words of my mouth. Then my judgments go forth like the sun. God was bringing his word, his judgments upon his people against their waywardness. And this was tearing them apart. This was breaking them. And the reality is the truth hurts sometimes, doesn't it? The truth was tearing God's people up. So with everything that 2020 has brought us, I believe there's a breaking that God is doing in us. He's trying to show us something about the world's condition and also our personal condition. And those truths can really hurt. They can break us sometimes. So I think some of the questions we need to ask related to 2020, what is this year broken in our world? Look at our world. What is 2020 broken in our world? And then to get a little bit more personal, what is 2020 broken in me? So as I thought about our world and specifically our country, I think there are some clear things that God is breaking. And I'll be honest, maybe some of this is hard for us to deal with. The truth can be invasive and uncomfortable. A lot of times we get very defensive because we don't want to deal with it. But I want to share a few big picture things that I think God is showing us that we need to pay attention to, even if it is uncomfortable for us. The first thing, and man, I never like talking about this. <laughs> first thing is politics. <clears throat> I'm not speaking to one side or the other. I'm not speaking to Democrats or Republicans. It's okay to follow politics and be informed. But I'm concerned there are too many Christians that put too much stock in politics, a political party, the government as the hope and answer for our world's problems. I believe God wants to break this political idolatry in the church to show us again as God's people, our hope isn't in government. It's not in a policy. Our hope is not built on the kingdoms of this world, but it's only in the true King Jesus, his kingdom, his ways, the breaking of political idolatry. Second, I think this year has shown us that racism is still an issue in our world. Their people are treated differently because of the color of their skin. And God is breaking the illusion that racism isn't a problem. And if what I just said makes you uncomfortable, 
I think you need to dig in a little bit. Why do you feel uncomfortable with this? I believe the church can't be blind to this reality. We need to be defenders of the Imago Dei. Every person is made in the image of God. Every person matters to God. And it can't just be talk and rhetoric. We need to live it out in action in our relationships. We need to be bridge builders where there are racial divides. And I want to keep reminding us, the hope ultimately lies in the gospel. Because racism is a spiritual issue. It's a heart issue. Only Christ can change the human heart. The gospel is the hope that we have against racism. So another thing, I think God is breaking this idea that we are invincible. And I think maybe this applies a little bit more to the younger generation. Because the older you get, I mean, as your body begins to fail, you realize, I'm not Superman. I'm not Wonder Woman anymore, if you thought you were Wonder Woman. (laughs) We are frail. We are vulnerable. Our bodies will eventually fail us. And I believe the pandemic is a wake-up call for many that tomorrow's not guaranteed. Our days are numbered. We are finite, mortal creatures. And in our mortality, there's an opportunity to discover the grander purpose to this life, to know God, to seek after him. So those are some big picture things that I think God is doing in our world. He's trying to break strongholds in people. But let me get a little bit more personal here and give you some questions to chew on. And I'm going to email these out because I know in the midst of a sermon, there's no way you can really sit with it and reflect on it and process it. I need more time with these questions too. The first one is personally, what has 2020 done to your faith and your trust in God? Has this year weakened or strengthened your confidence in God, your faith in Him? That's an important question that we need to wrestle through and really spend some time with God. What has this year done to my relationship with God? Second, has 2020 made you a more loving and compassionate person or more bitter, angry, or skeptical towards others? And I'll be honest, I need some time with this question. Because for me, 2020 has brought disappointment and broken trust in some relationships. And yet I sense God's call to me. I want to love more deeply. I want to be more gracious and compassionate. I want to be more selfless in my relationships. I believe God is breaking me in this area right now. So the last question, has 2020 made you more distant in your relationships? Or have you found new ways to remain close and connected to people? It's a year with a lot of challenges, especially relationally. It's so easy in the midst of not being able to see people to lose that connectedness. Are we finding new ways to stay connected to one another? These are important things to reflect on as we finish 2020. Because I believe God is doing something in the breaking. There's something good he wants to do. We don't always understand the why of the breaking. and That's why we need to trust God. He, he knows better. He has a plan in the breaking. So speaking of breaking, so a few weeks ago, the handle of our kitchen faucet broke off. And I I had to open it up and try to look at all the parts. I had to call my dad over and (laughs) call back up. And so we kind of, you know, assessed the situation and we were able to identify the part that we thought was broken. And I was able to order it online. It was supposed to come the next day. But for 24 hours, we had no water in our kitchen sink. So it was a minor inconvenience. We had to go to the bathroom with a a milk jug and fill it up with water and bring it to the kitchen. And man, I realized we are so spoiled. Man, back in the day, they'd go to the well once a day and fill it all up. And we had to go 25 feet to our bathroom in the comfort of our home, and it felt like a big ordeal. 
So anyway, the ne next day the part arrives. And I told Yvonne, okay, if everything goes well, it should only take 15 minutes. And the qualifier was the if, right? If everything goes well. And, uh, you know, as I said that to her, I was thinking of, you know, what she was thinking is this better work. I, I saw the look on her face. This better work. And I just, I prayed, oh, God, please have mercy upon me right now. And sure enough, 15 minutes later, the faucet is repaired. The water is back on in the kitchen sink, and I stopped for a moment, and I swear, it felt like the heavens opened up, <laughs> and the angels were singing this glorious song before me. It was a moment of glory for me, and the faucet's still working today. So that's... <laughs> there, there's something glorious about in the breaking to find repair and restoration, isn't there? And this is what Hosea speaks about in these verses. Yes, there is breaking that God is doing that is hard, but restoration is coming. Let's look again at verses 1 and 2. He has torn us to pieces, but he will heal us. He has injured us, but he will bind up our wounds. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will restore us that we may live in his presence. Do you see the restoration? He has torn us to pieces, but he will heal us. He has injured us, but he will bind up our wounds. He will revive us. He will restore us. God allows the breaking in order to restore. Nothing that is broken in this world is beyond the repair of our God. God is a healer. He's a reviver. He is a restorer. And this is what I love about our God. God takes what is broken and he brings it back together in a new way. His way. Church, in the breaking that you've experienced in this past year, know that our God wants to restore. There is hope. There is goodness in the breaking because something better is coming when God mends it when God puts it back together. So if you're feeling broken by 2020, I imagine many of us are, I want to invite you to come to God. Come to God and ask him to restore. Ask him to heal and mend whatever is broken in you. He wants to put things back together, but it's going to be done his way, not your way. There is hope in the breaking. Hope for restoration. And I get it. During hard times, I think it's normal to have a survival mindset. One way or another, I'm just going to get through this ordeal. We just got to make it to 2021. Four more days to go. 2020 will be over with. But I think we can miss out when we focus so much on getting through and surviving. I think there's something more that's needed in the hard times. The breaking and restoring is for us to discover a grander vision and purpose. And verse 3 helps us remember what this greater purpose is. Hosea 6.3 Let us acknowledge the Lord. Let us press on to acknowledge Him. As surely as the sun rises, He will appear. He will come to us like the winter rains, like the spring rains that water the earth. So the NIV translation uses the word acknowledge, which is interesting. Most other translations uses the verb to know. So when you think about it, though, you can't really know someone if you don't acknowledge them. To acknowledge someone means you recognize them. You pay attention to them. You take notice of them. So when someone walks in the room, you acknowledge their presence kind of the first step in a relationship. I think that's helpful for us to think about in our relationship with God. In the course of your average day, how do you acknowledge God? What does it look like for you to recognize him in your life? Acknowledge that he's real and present and that he's important to you. 
And there are many times that I've thought to myself, I just want to think about God more throughout my day. I, I just want to go to him more often and just talk to him, connect with him. Beyond those set times and those disciplines, those ordinary moments where I just acknowledge him, I talk to him, and I show him how important he is to me. And I think this is a key thing in developing a stronger relationship with God, to acknowledge God through the everyday moments of life. Verse 3 says, let us acknowledge the Lord. Let us press on to acknowledge him. There is a charge here. There's a call to action. Press on. Move forward in life acknowledging God. Especially when it's hard, we need to press on to this grander purpose. So 2013, I had the opportunity to run the Chicago Marathon. It's a day I'll never forget in my life. Running with thousands of people through downtown Chicago. And it was a beautiful day. And overall, it was a great run for me. I got to mile 20, and Yvonne and the kids were in Chinatown, and I got to see them at mile 20, and it gave me a boost. Yeah, only six more miles to go. I'm almost there. So one of the things people don't realize about the Chicago Marathon, you can see it here, it is crowded. There are thousands of people running through the streets of Chicago. And when you train, like, I was training all by myself. I'm used to running alone, not with thousands of people around me. So around mile 22, I was feeling like just congested. I was trying to move over to my left, just taking a step. And my left foot hit the curb. And fortunately, I didn't fall. But the moment my foot hit the curb, there was the shooting pain up my leg. And I had the worst cramp in my life. (laughs) For the next few miles. And I, I'm like, I have no idea how I'm going to finish this marathon. And at the end of the marathon, your body is just broken. And it becomes more mental than physical. And I just started crying out to God and just praying. God, give me the strength to finish this race one step at a time. And I, I pressed on. And praise God, I made it. I didn't have to stop. I didn't have to bow out was able to press on. I know many of you have faced incredible challenges in this life. You have learned to endure, to move forward, to keep going, to press on. With all the difficulty right now, I believe there is this charge from God to us right now. Press on, church. Press on. It's not just getting through the pandemic the challenges, it's pressing on to acknowledge God, to acknowledge God and to know him in the midst of these hard times. Church, we need to press on. We can't give up, especially when it comes to our faith, our trust in God. We need to move forward. We need to be steadfast in knowing God. And maybe 2020 has been a wake-up call for you. I think 2020 has been revealing to a lot of people where they're at in their relationship with God. And if you're listening right now and you acknowledge me, I have wandered, I have drifted away from God, I want to just give you that invitation. Let's return to God. Come back to him. Wherever you're at today, I want to charge you, take a step. Press on to know God. Don't be passive. Take action. I think with a new year coming, there's this fresh start. There's hope and anticipation for what the new year will bring. But whatever 2021 brings, my hope is for us as a church, we would press on to know God together. And even in the breaking, even when it's hard, we would have hope. We would have faith that God is doing something in us and we would not give up. I want to give us a few very practical next steps for us to start 2021 well with God, pressing on to know him. So the first thing is, and I shared this last year, this is something Yvonne and I do every year. It's become very meaningful for us. 
We ask God for a theme for the year, a word or a phrase or a scripture verse to help anchor us in the new year ahead, something that would be spiritually meaningful in our relationship with God. So a few years ago, I sensed the word slowing down. Well, God was saying, Jared, you're running too hard. Slow down. Another year, I sensed from God the word mercy. Jared, I want you to learn what it means to receive my mercy in your life. And I want you to be a man of mercy to others. I'm still asking God about 2021. I have a sense already, but I'm not completely sure yet. When God often reveals a theme for us, he'll also bring a scripture to us that we can anchor it in his word. I want to invite you over the next few weeks. It might take a few weeks. Be patient, but ask God for a theme for 2021 that would be meaningful in your relationship with God. The other thing, it's a great thing to share with others, to ask one another, do you have a theme for, from God for 2021? It's a way to go deeper in our relationships and connect together spiritually. So that's the first thing. So the well-known preacher, I quote him a lot, Charles Spurgeon, was once asked, what's more important, reading the Bible or praying? It's a good question. How would you answer that question? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Spurgeon responded, what's more important, breathing in or breathing out? Brilliant response. They're both necessary. And I want to remind us, Bible reading and prayer is all about our relationship with God. It's not about the duty, the discipline, getting through a list. It's about spending time connecting with God and his word in prayer. If you don't have a Bible reading plan yet for 2021, I want to offer up a couple of suggestions. These are my two all-time favorite reading plans. This first one, the green one, is reading through the entire Bible in a year. And what I love about this plan is two things. One is you're reading 25 days a month. So there's five, six days of grace already built in. The other thing is you're reading in both the Old Testament and the New Testament right at the beginning in January. Other plans, you don't get to the New Testament until October. I don't like that. I want to be in the New Testament to start the year. This is a great plan. I've been using it for the last few years. If you've never read through the whole Bible, 2021, consider it. Take on the challenge. Use the green plan. This uh, red and yellow plan is reading through the New Testament in a year. And this is five days a week of reading, one chapter a day. It's very doable. I think even kids could do this plan. So this is reading through the New Testament in a year. Uh, you don't have to do these plans. But just make sure you're making a commitment to get into the Word of God in 2021. So the last step relates to prayer. And prayer is such an important value in our congregation. I'm so thankful for Dennis and his leadership for our prayer ministry. So Dennis and I were talking about how do we take next steps as a church to go deeper in prayer, and start 2021 well in this area. And we put together a prayer calendar that can be used throughout the entire year. So it's 31 days of prayer, so you can reuse it every month. And it's very simple. It's very accessible. Each day has a has a, a single prayer focus to, you, to it. So let me give you a few examples. Day one, God, I give this entire year and month to you. Simple. Day 11, pray for our church to fulfill the mission of making disciples of Christ. Day 21, pray for God to give us his heart for those who are hurting. So each day has a simple focus each week has a different area that we're highlighting. The first week is our relationship with God. The second week is praying for our church. The third week is praying for outreach and evangelism. And the fourth week is praying for our missionaries and our world. So I hope this will be a very helpful resource for our church to be praying together for the same thing every day. The other challenge I want to give us, so prayer often is this individual thing that we do on our own. I want to you know, charge you to consider finding a prayer buddy. And maybe you can think of a prayer partner, whatever you want to call it. Someone 
who's a fellow Christian that you can connect with once a week to pray with. 10, 15 minutes, a phone call, Zoom, FaceTime, whatever it is, to take prayer from not being this isolated thing, but making it more connected, finding a prayer partner. So I'm going to send out an email with all these resources so you have them before the new year begins. But church, I want to ask us together, let's start 2021 well, focused on knowing God, pressing on to acknowledge Him and putting Him first. And I look forward to whatever the new year brings because we're going to do it together. We don't know what 2021 has in store for us as a church and for our world, but we are in this together. So let me pray for us. God, as hard as it is sometimes, I just I want to thank you for 2020. I want to thank you that in the challenges, you have been so faithful. You have sustained us. You have held us together as a church, as your people. And God, this is such an opportunity for the church to rise up in the brokenness of our world and to shine for you. And we just want to continue to pray that you would use our church to bring the light, the love, and the hope of Jesus Christ to our community, to others in our lives. I want to give us a moment to ask the Holy Spirit to just to lead us to, to shine the spotlight on what is 2020 broken in you? personally. And I just want to, Holy Spirit, I want to just invite you to shine the light on our lives right now and reveal to us what this year has broken in us. Broken in us that, God, you need to repair, that only you can mend and restore. So I want to give you just a few moments quiet with God. Just invite him to show you what is this year broken in you. God, I know that's not a lot of time, but I just, I pray your Holy Spirit would continue to, to dig into our hearts, continue to reveal to us what this year has broken in us, God, that, that you want to mend, that you want to restore. So God, I pray over us. I pray your restoration. I pray your healing care. I pray that you would mend and restore the things that have been torn up in us in this difficult year. And God, as we look ahead to 2021, we give you this new year. We want to be yielded. We want to be surrendered fully to you, God. We want to press on to acknowledge you, to tell you and to show you how important you are in our lives. And God, I pray that you would just Give us practical ways that you would show us new ways that we can just acknowledge you more and demonstrate to you how meaningful our relationship is. God, I pray that you would give us themes and words and phrases and verses that would just anchor us in a new year ahead. There are things headed our way that, that you know about and we have no idea yet. So we ask, God, that you would go before us, that you would spiritually lead us. And I pray, God, we would be people who are committed to your word, faithful in prayer. Not because it's a duty, because it's a, a delight. It's a joy to connect with you through your word and through times of prayer. 
So God, thank you for the hope that we have in you that no one or nothing can take away. We pray all this together in Jesus' name.